This edition of Mac Voices is sponsored by ProXPN, the virtual private network service. Protect your internet by securing your connection and get up to 50% off by visiting proxpn.com and using the offer code VOICES. And by Mac Voices Magazine, our free Flipboard magazine that brings you some of the best Mac, iPhone, and iPad productivity tips on the web. High in signal, low in noise, just like Mac Voices, Mac Voices Magazine includes information on how you can get more out of your Apple technology. Subscribe at macvoices.com slash magazine or search for Mac Voices Magazine on Flipboard. Welcome to Mac Voices. This is a talk of the Mac community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, we're here to uh, talk to some friends uh, to uh, about a new version of one of my favorite utilities, Text Expander, and some of the changes that have come to it. Uh, First up, let's find out who's here, and then we'll get into some of the details. Uh, Mr. Greg Scown of, of Smile. Greg, it's great to have you. Pleasure to be here. As always. And somebody new. I don't think Maya Olson has been on Mac Voices before. She is also of Smile. Maya, it's great to have you. Hi, Chuck. Uh, it's good to be on. I hope this is the first of many. She's, she's not sure about that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it's the first of many. Ah, uh, good, good. Okay. So let's just get this out of the way right up front. Uh, a disclaimer or under the heading more of full disclosure. Um, Smile has, is, has been, is, and I hope will continue to be a sponsor of Mac Voices. Um, and as far as I'm concerned, that's not why Greg and Maya are here. Uh, they're here to talk about a new version of one of my favorite utilities, something that I prefer not to live without. Um, and the record is pretty clear on that because I've been saying that I think every time a new version of Dex Expander has come out for years. So that's the way we're going to approach this. Um, with that said, Greg, we have a new version of Text Expander, Text Expander 6, and it has brought a number of changes uh, with it. Um, why don't we talk about the function first, the functional changes, and then we'll get into the pricing model. Okay, absolutely. So uh, the biggest thing in Text Expander um, and the new Text Expander is that it's now a complete package in the sense of it's backed by a web service. Um, and so you have a web service, you have a Mac client, you have an iOS client, and you have also a Windows beta client. Um, and all of these maintain your snippets. Uh, you can edit them and you can share them, uh, most importantly. So you can share them either with other people via their email address, or you can share them uh, by starting an organization and share them amongst your team, manage access, and uh, manage your team as well. Uh, so you know, for example, we at Smile are an organization and we manage our snippets for support and other things. Um, and you, know, you might manage your snippets between you and some folks in your office. Or uh, other members of my family, perhaps. Exactly. Okay. What's what is there a difference between sharing my snippets as an individual or snaring, sharing my snippets? Try to say that a few times fast. Sharing my snippets as a part of a team and business. Uh, so sharing your snippets as an individual, um, you do via email address and. Uh, sharing your snippets as an organization, you'll actually have all the members of the organization listed for you to share with. So it's just a slightly different presentation. Ah, that's interesting. So if I'm managing the organization, I can decide which snippets I want to share with the organization. Which snippet groups, but yes. Snippet groups. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. That's good. Um, so this is coming now with your own cloud service. Is and before, as I recall, it was you. Well, you had the option of syncing your snippets among your own devices, either with Dropbox or iCloud. Uh, why the change? Well, so we wanted to be able to support the robust kind of sharing that we have in mind here, uh, and in order to do that, we we need to use our own service. So let's talk about the difference between uh, how Text Expander sharing works and how Dropbox and iCloud work. In the case of Dropbox and iCloud you sync your Texas Banner data file amongst multiple devices. It's a single monolithic file, or it's a file with a bunch of pieces, but basically it's all or nothing. You sync this whole thing uh, amongst all of your devices, and you have no means to provide access control to other people, and you know, that's how it goes. 
in terms of Tax Expander, the way it works is that when you first log in, uh, your snippets are uploaded as private groups uh, that are your own and yours alone. And then should you choose to share with others, then you go ahead and set up sharing. Uh, you can do that uh, by their email address or through their organization. And likewise, people can share with you. And only the shared snippets are shared amongst people. All of the snippets that you have are shared amongst all of your devices, uh, but your own snippets remain your own. And then those that you share, you're welcome to share with others. Got it. Do I have an option of turning off this cloud service and continuing to use Dropbox and iCloud, or is this just an, a one-way street? Uh, well, the the option for that would be to continue to use Texas Matter Five for the time being. Uh, you know, we we really since we're building something that's so fundamentally different from Dropbox and iCloud in terms of its function for Text Expander, it's really difficult or not impossible to try and mix the two. Okay, that, make, that makes sense. That makes sense. Um, Maya, I'm not sure where you fit into this discussion, so either jump in or Greg, you can defer to Maya or you know whatever. I, I was just about to suggest Maya take the next one. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, there's you're more up on the like very technical details. So there's a couple of things I think you're better at answering. Okay. Well, since we've gotten into the Text Expander 5 question, let's just go there for a second. Um, this is not a required upgrade, at least at this at this point. And what I mean by that is Text Expander 5 functions perfectly fine on the current version of the Mac OS, but there's no guarantee on future versions. So we do support it on this version and we'll continue to, but we're also going to upgrade it for whatever the next operating system is. I mean, this is not like a forcing people on. We know that they, some people like what they have and they're welcome to stay there and we'll keep supporting that for what that'd be like the next, however long that operating system lasts, <laughs> whatever Apple's cycle is for that. Okay. So theoretically we could be talking June, um, depending on what Apple announces at WWDC, or it could be going for a lot longer than that. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. And so for upgraders, we are offering some upgrade pricing and stuff. And that actually starts when they start their account. So if they decide to keep using version 5 for a year and then switch to us, that will still be around for them. Got it. Okay. So at the moment, the two are running side by side, if you will. Is that is sure. that fair? Yeah, sure. Okay. No, that's, I mean... It wouldn't make sense to be run. Well, you can't run both of them at the same time. Well, yeah, um, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> but but in terms, well, and and also we are not actively selling Texas Spinner Five to new customers. Uh, it doesn't make sense to say that we've built this new service and we're going in this particular direction and then to continue to sell, uh, you know, the the old products. But it certainly makes sense for us to support our existing customers and ensure that they're happy. Got it. Um, all right, so we can stick with Text Expander 5 for the it, for the immediate future, let's say that, or we can move over to Text Expander 6. Um, what's the process of, of moving over? Is it just a matter of launching the application and all your snippets get synced to the new cloud service? Uh, yeah, so you would just sign up for a textexpander.com account, and from there you can download the shiny new app, and it'll copy over all of your older snippets so then you'll all of your snippets will be on the uh, the text expander service and you can sync them with all of the current versions so the uh, the iOS version that goes with it and then the Windows version if you have a PC and then you just get rid of the version 5 and should be pretty simple okay so so on the iOS side though um, I mean for me, Personally, my OS devices right now are looking for that stored in Dropbox. How how is that transition happening? Do I need to tell my my iOS devices to look somewhere else, or is that coming with say a new a, a, a small upgrade to the the Text Expander apps on iOS? Yes. So we do have a new version of uh, the iOS app, and it is free on the App Store since you just pay for the service. And then the idea is that. All of the apps just come free with the service. Got it. Okay, so I got I, I, I got to touch on security when it comes to the cloud, 
because that's a, a huge concern right now in, in every direction, but especially with cloud computing. Um, what kind of security is there for my snippets on textexpander.com? Okay, sure. So um, we're using end-to-end -end encryption uh, from your device to textexpander.com. Um, and uh, you know, your snippets locally are stored in the clear. Um, and your snippets, once they are safe and secure in the server, are also stored in the clear such that they could be shared with others. Uh, they're provided with access control. So, uh, for example, there are only three people at Smile who have complete access to the database. Everything else is federated by an administration panel. No one has access to your snippet content except the folks who have access to the complete database. And they, you know, we have no intentions of accessing your snippets. That's part of our privacy policy. It would be you know, terrible for us. It's not what we're about. Uh, but we've also built in the safeguards for you know, our team. We don't want our team to have access to that. Um, and you know, we don't want you to have access to anybody else's data either. I know in past interviews we've discussed the issue, and back when it was not nearly the hot issue it is right now, about not storing credit cards in Text Expander, credit card numbers, and that kind of thing. That was never a good idea, and in, under these circumstances, it's probably even a, a worse idea if you're thinking about doing that. Is that a fair statement? I would argue that our stance on that hasn't changed. It wasn't a good idea before. It's still not a good idea. Um, we're actually big fans of 1Password. We recommend them uh, if you want to store something that actually needs to be secure. Um, actually, the Mac operating system prevents Text Expander from functioning in password fields. But that's for your protection. That's not a bug, that's a feature. And um, so, along that, that just goes with the idea that other people are not going to be looking at your snippets, but you don't want your credit card in there. Right. Well, even if they're not looking at my snippets, if somebody comes up to my machine and I have been unwise enough to walk away and leave it wide open, I don't want them typing CC and have my credit card number pop out. So, Sure, that's understandable as well. Although, you know, the mechanisms to protect that would be to have a screensaver with the password protection, et cetera. I mean, just first of all, don't do your credit card in Tax Spinner, but also do, you know, the good security on your own machine as well. Right. Um, okay, I'm just, I want to make sure I hit everything because there's, there's so many things we want to get to. Um, Greg, you said something about the, the password, excuse me, the, the snippets are stored in the clear on my machine. Does that mean that I have a copy of my snippets locally that I could back up or that will get backed up as part of my normal backup scheme? Uh, you do have a copy of your snippets locally. Uh, it's basically a cache of the data that's on the server. Um, and, uh, Yes, it does get backed up locally, although really the, the, the truth of what you have is, is now stored on the server. So if you were to switch Macs, you would simply log into your TexasBanner.com account on your new Mac, and it would pull a copy of essentially the, the truth from the server. Um, and so that, that's how that works now. The, the truth is in the cloud. <laughs> now, you own your data, and so you know the the cache that you do have locally on your machine, you can play with. I mean, it's in XML format. It's something you can access if you desire. And then also at, on a more practical level, if you want to select a snippet group in the Texas Banner Mac client and choose save this group, you can go ahead and save a copy of the group anywhere you want. Okay, good. So I, in the unlikely event that something would happen to the cloud, I still have my local copy, and I have the copies that are stored in my backups, assuming that I've done the backups the way that we all should. Yes, that's correct. Got it. Okay, so let's get to the pricing because that's uh, it's it's no it would be an understatement to say that this hasn't that this has not been controversial. Um, you have decided to go with a subscription model, and I'm kind of anxious to just find out what the what the thinking is here. Well, um, when you use a upgrade model, which is what we've been doing, then you sort of hold off on all of the new and interesting features you've been working on, and then someone pays for that feature set, and then you wait for like, you know, a year or two, and then you 
gather up all those cool features that you weren't able to release during that whole time and you charge more money for it. And so with a subscription, you give sort of incremental small payments and then we give continuous updates. And so we don't have to hold off. You get cool features to you much faster and it should be a better user experience. I, I'm, thank you, Maya. And we'll get back to the pricing in a second because I, I kind of anticipated part of that answer. And it excites me and it also fills me with a little trepidation um, because I don't know, I, how will the upgrade process work? When you come up with cool new feature number 73, does it just suddenly appear one day, or am I am I notified that hey you you're about to get a, a text expander upgrade, or does it just appear there and and then I get an email or whatever saying that you know now you can turn all your snippets purple? Well, um, it should appear, but we will also be sending an email so that way we can talk about all of the neat stuff we've been adding. Um, it wouldn't make sense for us to be too quiet about it. Otherwise, you won't know what's happening necessarily. And we want to get you engaged in the cool stuff. And also, we like feedback on the features. It sort of helps guide us on where we want to go next. Okay. I, I, I say that just because, I've frankly, I've had some, some negative experiences with uh, another piece of software that follows that kind of model. And sometimes it feels like I'm never quite sure what version I'm running because they've pushed something to me in the background. In fact, come to think of it, I can think of a couple pieces of software, and we're using one of them right now, Skype, that has a tendency to do that. And all of a sudden, things change in the menu or disappear from this menu and move to that menu. And it's, it can be a frustrating experience if it's not done right. Well, for the OS X client, uh, we'll be using the same Sparkle updater that we've been using all along. And so you'll receive notice that an update is available and you'll have the opportunity to choose to update at that time or to hold off. Now, because we have a service backend as well, there may come a time where the update becomes mandatory um, because you know we, we've added something that uh, you know we, we can no longer provide backward compatibility with. Uh, on the flip side, we don't expect that to be super common, but likewise, we also expect our users to update regularly when when requested. Got it. Again, not thanks. we're not planning to do the Skype thing of like it just updates and that's that. And oh, that's thank you. Your, your menu somewhere else. Um, you know, you'll at least have some notice that it's coming. Well, thank you. We, I, I really appreciate that because even as we started this call, I was looking for a particular menu. It's like where did it go? I know where it used to be. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, on iOS, you know, we're doing the same as, as everyone else. And so most iOS customers have automatic upgrade, updates turned on. And, you know, we run through the same review and updating process as that. So this, this is a whole new thing for Smile. And I know that in some of the past conversations I've had with you, Greg, or Philip, or both of you, um, some, some Smile apps have gone on the App Store, some have come off the App Store, some are being sold you know, on both, um, and, and you all have been part of the discussion about the challenges of the App Store versus the non-App Store models. Um, this is yet another model, the subscription model. And Maya did a great job of explaining what the benefits are, especially from a feature standpoint. Um, how, how do you feel that it stacks up from a value proposition kind of thing and the, the, the way that you're going? Is, is this just a sign of the times or is there something else that uh, factored into your decision? Well, it, it lines up with what we're doing. So we've move to providing a service um, and we've moved to bundling the clients and so the pricing and the model come along for the ride essentially um, you know it, we, it made sense to change them at the same time uh, without changing them we would have to continue to charge uh, for the clients we would have to do silly things like charge you five dollars for a new iOS app uh, you know, that you certainly don't want to pay. Um, you know, and we, we've certainly received feedback about that. But, you know, in the model that exists, that's our only option. So, you know, we've chosen to, to, to dodge left a little bit and, uh, you know, change the model to something that we think works better. This edition of Mac Voices is sponsored by ProXPN, the virtual private network service. Protect your internet by securing your connection 
and get up to 50% off by visiting ProXPN.com and using the offer code VOICES. It seems we talk a lot about security these days. You can barely open a news website or scroll your Twitter feed without seeing something about hacking, identity theft, surveillance of one kind or another, and a dozen other security-related topics. There are a few ways you can handle this. You can stick your head in the sand and pretend it isn't happening. You can adopt the it can't happen to me attitude. Or you can take a few simple steps to reduce your exposure. One of those steps is to sign up with ProXPN, the virtual private network service, so the guy sitting in the corner of the coffee shop isn't tapping into your web surfing habits, or the girl in the next row at the airport isn't recording your passwords as you log into your email, do your online banking, or even shop at Amazon. The team at ProXPN don't log anything, so there are no records for anyone to try to acquire. They don't watch what you do either. In fact, they couldn't if they wanted to, since you're using their 2048-bit encryption key and a 512-bit encryption tunnel. Don't know what that means? No problem. You don't have to. Just know that you're safe and secure and no one is watching what you do or where you do it. I hear from way too many people who say, but I have nothing to hide. Of course you do. Credit card numbers, logins to company websites and email accounts, your brokerage account, your bank account. Even online shopping accounts can be problematic if you've saved credit card numbers there. You could find yourself paying for an 80-inch TV that you never ordered, or even worse, a PC that you never would have ordered. All that and more can be avoided if you just go to ProXPN.com right now and sign up for a free account. No credit card necessary. Try ProXPN and find out how easy it is to use on your Mac. Find out how good it feels to know you're safe and secure when you tap into any public Wi-Fi hotspot. Discover how much you like knowing that no one is tracking you, that no one can track you. Then take it up a notch and sign up using the code VOICES to get up to 50% off a premium account to get unlimited VPN speed. Get all the ports open so you can do whatever you want with no restrictions, support for your mobile devices, and a host of other features. That's ProXPN and the code VOICES for up to 50% off their premium level service. Give it a try and let me know how much you like being secure. I'm Chuck at MacVoices.com. Thanks to ProXPN for their support of Mac Voices. Yeah, I, I've I've been a little surprised at at some of the um, uh, some some of the comments that have been directed to you about this new pricing model. Um, I, I have not done the math, so I'll say that right up front. But if I go back and look at the paid upgrades, the paid versions versus um, the free versions. And, and stretch it out for a period of a, of a few years because Text Expander, in my opinion, is is the kind of app that if you like it or love it, you're going to get it, and it's it becomes part of your productivity suite. So, I I don't I I, I uh, by the seat of my pants, it does not feel like this is going to cost me any more, or if it is, it's not a whole lot more than you know just continuing to do the upgrades and all. And making sure that I'm I'm staying current. Now you all probably have done the math on that, and and I don't know if that's fair or not, but that's the way it feels to me. So for the um, upgrading users, if you look at the upgrade costs, um, so last year was about nineteen ninety nine. Uh, this year, uh, if you switch to the service for a year, then the whole year would cost about twenty three dollars. Which, if you factor in things, get more expensive with time because we add new features and so on and inflation and whatnot, then this would be about the same as buying a yearly upgrade. And likewise, you're not paying for a new iOS app. So if we were to actually do the 1995 plus the 495, it's less than that. And assuming you're a PC user, then that would be plus whatever another full you know, desktop app would cost. If, if you thank you, if you said it before, I, I apologize. For, I've forgotten it. If I'm buying one TextExpander.com uh, subscription, that's cross-platform, or do I have to buy a second one for a PC? No, no it's one, one, all sorry. bundled together. Okay, all right, good. That's that's kind of what I thought. I've I, I heard you say, but I wanted to be sure. I don't envy you as as software people um, because we've you know I've, we've talked with you all we've talked with a number of other guests about this situation where iOS apps you know everybody is expecting things for a buck or two now and that put pressure on the on the, the desktop apps and 
pulls them down, and people seem to be getting really bent out of shape over some of this stuff. Um, and it, it just, I, I mean, you've, you've got to have funding to continue to build these apps and to keep them up to date and, as Maya said, to add the new features. So I've been just a little surprised at how many people have, have taken so much offense to this change. Have, have you? I'll let you take that one, Greg. Okay. Oh, sorry. All right. <laughs> so um, I, I think that, yes, we're a little bit surprised in the sense that, you know, we believe that Taxi Spender brings a lot of value um, and brings sort of value that it can demonstrate itself. So, you know, you save a few hours using Text Expander in the course of a year, you have an hourly rate that your time is worth and you can do the math. And so, you know, it, it, it attempts to justify itself. Um, and so that number is almost always well more than what we have ever in the past or are, you know, currently or even into the future charging for the product. So that part is maybe a little surprising. Uh, you know, we think that we've done the job of demonstrating the value. And um, I mean, on the bright side, we have tons of users who see that value, who, uh, you know, have responded to what we're doing positively and have said, hey, you know, this makes sense. This is good. Uh, this is going to be good for us because we're going to see development as soon as it's ready, as opposed to farther into the future. And, you know, you'll be able to make decisions that make more sense based on that. Yeah. I, I, again, I, I, I just, of all the, of all the apps that I personally use, Text Expander, to, to take this step, I think Text Expander makes sense um, because it's, and I'm not going to start calling names with other apps, um, but there are other apps I use maybe once or twice a day, and there are some apps I use once or twice a week maybe or less. Text Expander I use once or twice an hour at least when I'm in the, at the computer and probably more um, because it's just now part of my environment. So if there was ever a piece of software that has justified its cost and, and the fact that I want it upgraded, I want it kept you know bright and shiny and totally functioning at, at all times, no matter what Apple does to the OS, uh, this would be it. So you know, I, 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 I support you. And, and again, I'm sure there are going to be people that are they're going to send arrows all three of our ways, but I just I really do feel that way. That's it's it's something that sort of like the Mac OS itself. I never had a problem paying for those upgrades because I wanted them to, to stay current. Apple saw fit to go another direction for other reasons, and that's fine. Mm -hmm. So I you know, with all that, you know, we haven't even talked about what it will cost. So let's get into the the pricing uh, of this, and then a couple questions about that. So what's it cost? If you are in upgrading person, then it would cost uh, 198 a month, assuming that you take the annual payments and that ends up being about $24 a year. Um, then for regular pricing, it's uh, 495 for a life hacker, which is an individual user plan, and then uh, 995 uh, per month per user for a team plan. So if you are like a company or a dedicated group of people and you have, you know, real sharing needs, then that has extra features for you. And is that, are there, are there vol volume, <laughs> are there like annual, I believe there are annual discounts available? Yes. So you can pay monthly or annually. Um, in my imagination, I guess you would <laughs> you would try the, the demo and then maybe if you weren't sure you'd do a couple of months and then you would go annually because like that was enough time to see oh definitely by that time you've racked up enough you know save snippets and we have a statistics window and so you can see how much time you've saved and uh, you'll be able to understand that it's really valuable and you want to keep it okay the the dollar 98 um now is that as an upgrader, is how long does that go for until I kick over into another price model? Uh, that is for the first 12 months. For the first 12 months. Okay. Okay. So really, I'm not having to, I'm having to invest, 
uh, maybe a little more than the past upgrading pricing for the next year, especially if I, well, if I'm an upgrader, then it's, it's, it's less than uh, the, the upgrade pricing has been in the past. And if I'm just new to this, then it's about what, it, I think I'm doing the math right in my head, um, it's about what it would be for uh, a, regular, a regular price. Is that? Yes, no, the, the annual life hacker plan um, is roughly equivalent to what we were charging for a uh, Texas vendor license in the past. Okay. All right. Um, okay, so that brings the subscription model and the pricing and all brings some questions. Um, let's pretend for a second that, no, let's not go that, I'm not going to use that example. Let's just say that I'm on vacation in darkest Africa and suddenly forget to renew my subscription. What happens to my snippets? Are they gone? And how, how long do you store them before I get back from Africa and, and re-engage my subscription? Uh, so your snippets will remain on your device, um, you know, and it, they'll also remain on our server. Um, and I'm pretty sure that we've committed to at least three months of that, possibly longer. So unless your African safari is considerably longer than that, then you'll be OK. OK. All right, so I don't have to worry about not connecting or the service, uh, my snippets disappearing, because most of us that have adopted Text Expander have quite a library of snippets, which is another reason I was asking about the backups. Um, so there's really well, if you're if you're also worried about just time, like we don't like cut you off right away. There is actually, I believe it's like a full month of sort of trying to remind you to update your credit card. And so um, we're not the power company. <laughs> we won't just cut you off. <laughs> okay. That's, that's good. Yeah. Cause I, I can do without power. I'm not sure I can do without my snippets. <laughs> um, what else, what have we not covered here guys? Cause again, I know there, I mean, we have the functionality question. We have the, the pricing question, any, anything else that we've missed or anything you want to highlight about text expander six? Well, so the switch to the service model has actually opened up some interesting doors for us. Like there's whole new things that we can do that just weren't possible before. And we're looking forward to getting that in the future. And so I know that um, people right now aren't really seeing what we're seeing because, well, we've spent a year thinking about it and dreaming it up. So, Greg, can you mention a couple of the, the things we're looking at? Oh, sure. Like absolutely. Exciting new things. Oh, yeah. No. So, so also well, taking a step back very briefly, uh, you know, the one of the challenges for us is that, uh, you know, sharing is huge. I mean, it's just this enormous feature. And, uh, you know, I, I think that uh, I'm, I'm certainly trying to evangelize not conflating it with sync of, of iCloud or Dropbox. They're just not the same. Sharing is, um, you know, just it's it's the cornerstone to what we're doing. And you, know, you live in a world where you share knowledge with other people all the time, uh, either your colleagues or your friends or your church or your volunteer group or your hobby organization. And so prior to the new tax expander, there really was no practical way to share. You would basically you'd save the file, you'd give it to somebody else and it would instantly be out of date. There was no mechanism to keep it up to date. Um, or you built some sort of URL-based solution where you were pulling in data from a web server and you had to manage that and all of its editing yourself. Now, TextExpander comes with the ability to do all this with incredible ease. I mean, doing it with just your email address or doing it with a complete organization and full support for that organization. So I just want to try to make sure that that doesn't get lost in, in, in all of what we're talking about. Yeah, and... and I would much rather talk about the capabilities, but I guess you're. I'm, oh yeah, no, and then I'm going to talk. Now we're talking about what does that let us do next? Okay, so, good. Yeah. So having your uh, snippets available on on the server, um, and having the server sort of aware of your editing and, and activity allows us to do some really neat things. Um, we can actually potentially add integrations so that something occurs when you edit a snippet or when you add a snippet to a new group or when you create a group. So these could trigger some sort of activity, say an email or posting to your Slack channel or things along those lines. And 
we have no ability to do that now because your data lives siloed on your machine or you know fairly constrained on iCloud or Dropbox. Another thing that we can do moving forward that, that we really can't practically do now is allow for the public publication of groups such that you could publish groups that you want others to have access to. Uh, and you could also subscribe to groups that others advertise. So for example, uh, Brett Terpstra produces some really fantastic snippet groups. And so uh, we want for him to be able to publish those to the world and for the world to subscribe to them uh, without having to do wonky things on his website or download or whatever. So, you know, we're really excited about those things uh, as things that we're able to do moving forward. Craig, don't let me put words in your mouth, but are you talking about text expander almost becoming kind of like a bot creator? Um, not, I don't think quite that. I think we're, we're talking about text expander allowing publishing of knowledge that people want to be public. Uh, so, you know, if you've created a group of snippets that you really want other people to have, then we're looking to build a mechanism in to make it easy for you to do that. Um, and likewise, if you're trying to discover what other people have done to make it easy for you to discover that. And then, I mean, in terms of, of integrations, I, I don't envision Text Expander having the intelligence of that. I actually just envision us facilitating uh, actions occurring events on other services or actions from other services, creating groups, creating snippets or editing snippets. I think I'm starting to get it, but it's it's still a little fuzzy. But I think I'm starting to get it. So, so I can publish things, and and because they're snippets, and because we're syncing through the TextExpander.com uh, service, they will automatically update on on the other side. Correct. Okay. Okay. I got to think about that for a while. But your example of what the kind of stuff Brett does makes perfect sense. You know that that he I'm sure he'll be one that would make, make use of something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, well, not, not just, oh, sorry, go ahead, Maya, please. Yeah, yeah, Maya. Oh, I was, um, also one of our users is, works in an IT department, and one of his requests actually was for something very similar to this because he, you know, hangs out in the IT industry and they all are very interested in the types of scripts and macros they have. So they could actually share some of the things that they're doing with each other. And even if they don't want to, you know, take the whole thing, it'll definitely allow them to share their ideas and get ideas from each other. And being able to have a way to find them is a, is a big thing. And having a way to share them is, is a big thing. Yeah. And especially uh, as Greg was explaining the publishing, now all of a sudden I start to get it a little more that it can be almost a live updating kind kind of kind of thing is, is that is that correct greg yes certainly okay yeah so you subscribe to a group of i don't know wikipedia editor wiki text markup it helps you update your articles and so whenever you add a new one then everybody gets to share in that instantly without going through sort of the hoops that you would have to go through now to do something sort of similar well, I'm thinking about some of the some of the snippets I've seen created by David Sparks and others, um, where my only option now is to either download them from his site and implement them in my text expander, or uh, hand hand type them myself. Um, now he decides to publish it, share it. It suddenly becomes integrated immediately with my text expander. That's right. That's that's the vision where we're headed. Okay. And then, I mean, another example of the type of thing we might do for this is, is one of my weaknesses, which is the sort of tech branding. So is it Facebook with a capital B or is it not? It isn't, by the way. But, you know, I, I, I have to think about that when I type these things. And I, I, I don't know, I kind of. I kind of detest having to think about that. <laughs> I sort of feel like that's not something that that is a good use of, of, of brain power. And so. You know, I could publish uh, what I have now or I could subscribe to what someone else has done and solve this problem for me, you know. Uh, and then likewise, it's something that could potentially update over time as folks realize, oh, gee, you know, how, how do we put NVIDIA? Is it a small M with a capital V? Is it one word? How does it work? Some people, I, I, 
I think I'm drawing a decent comparison here, but one of the first things I did when I got Text Expander 100 years ago was loaded the uh, the Tidbits Correction Library in, and that saved me a lot of you know a lot of, of mistypings. And now I can see something like that uh, as new companies come on board, as new these new issues come up, that's automatically updated because I'm subscribed to it, and now I've just got I'm almost automatic. Uh, auto a different kind of automatic autocorrect. The built-in tidbits autocorrect group for a text expander is actually already using this mechanism on the back end. Ah, ah, okay. So, there's not a front end yet, but there's a bit of a back end. All right, well, get to work on the front end, will you? Because we, we need it. Yeah, yeah, we, we know. Need it. We need it. We hear you. I, Greg, thank you. I, you know. I think a lot of us have been focused on the the pricing model, and to be very frank, you know, some people have characterized it as more of a money grab, and I think now this explanation, you know, text expander is evolving into a bit more than it has been. It still has the functionality that we all know and love, but it sounds like there's a lot of new stuff that sometimes that message is getting lost. At the very least, it's getting lost, and maybe even worse, we don't completely understand it yet. So. Yeah, a lot of education to go to be done here. Well, and thank you for the opportunity to to explain a bit. Yeah, is there anything on any of the websites where we can we can send people to learn a little bit more about this so they can start to think about it correctly? Uh, yeah. So, um, if you just go to textexpander.com, uh, that's the new site for all of the information you can find there. Um, if you had, if you're an upgrader, you can head over to techspinner.com slash upgrade. Um, we've been talking about this on our blog a bit. And so we have a couple of articles there over on the smile blog. Um, but the text expander website has, you know, knowledge base and it has a bunch of support features to sort of show you around. So if you don't, aren't ready to dip your toe all the way in up to your ankle in the water, you can maybe just start with some information and some videos and um, start that way. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm sitting here, my, my mind is spinning now because I think I, I, even though I'd been reading about this um, and we talked before of, by email a little bit, I don't think I fully understood everything that was happening here. It just sounded more like you were shifting to a cloud service going to the subscription model. So this is this is not the end. This is really just the beginning. Um, kind of excited yes. to see what, what you all come up with. Oh, so are we. Yeah. Oh, yeah. OK. Um, all right, so let's let's run down right quick. Text Expander 5 is not being sold now, but there's nothing says that you're not going to prevent anyone from using it. You, you can just keep on going until it breaks. Text Expander 6 is a brand new thing. The migration is very easy. The let's see, the iOS apps have been updated, and so if you already have those, you should be getting those through the iOS App Store updates. Um, actually, that that's not quite correct. So Sorry. there is a new separate iOS app. Uh, uh, so it's version four. It's it's free. It's available on the App Store. The old app is not. Uh, searchable on the App Store. It's available to those who purchased it still through their update purchases tab. But the new, you just search for the new app and and go ahead and, and grab it. And then after you've decided whether you need to transfer data, so if you're like an iOS only user, you'll hold the old app, you'll launch the new app, it'll grab your data, and then you can delete the old app. Uh, or it will also offer you the opportunity to just pull the fresh data from the server, which you would probably do if you were primarily a Mac user. And to get this much geeky, geeky Greg, um, is this implemented as also as uh, an iOS keyboard? Yes, they're the same iOS keyboard same. that you're accustomed to is available in te in the new version, the new TextMeter app. Got it. Okay. Um, we have annual subscription as well as monthly, and of course, monthly you can subscribe, uh, drop that anytime if you want, um, or get a discount by paying uh, paying annually. What have I missed? That's, and then we and then well how what am I talking about? We've missed all these new interesting capabilities that now we have to think about and learn how to use and understand that this is where text expander is going. Huh? A lot to chew on here, guys. A lot to chew on. Yeah, so, I think it'll be a bit of a learning process since it just 
wasn't in a lot of people's headspace that they could do this before. So now it's this new thing and we get to figure out all the cool new things that we can do with it. Yeah. Well, you've got a whole new set of tools to, to work with. You know, before we had Text Expander, now we have a lot of other interesting things. Great. So it's TextExpander.com, SmileSoftware.com, of course. Um, go, folks, please go check it out um, and, and reserve your judgment on all of this until you have checked it out. And hopefully, uh, Maya and Greg have made this a, a little bit different conversation. I know they have for me, and I, I really appreciate it. Guys, I hope to have you back again real soon because it sounds like there's going to be a lot to talk about uh, with Text Expander moving forward as with all the Smile products, and you know you're always welcome. Excellent. Thank you very much, Chuck. Maya, this is not the first time, or the, not the <laughs> last time. It is the first time. It's not the last time. <laughs> yes, it's been great speaking with you. I uh, look forward to doing it again. All right. Great. Great. Folks, I'm Chuck Joyner. This is Mac Voices. Uh, I, I'm interested in what you think about this, good or bad, but I, I encourage you to make sure that you understand everything here before you pass that judgment. Um, but if you have something to say, I'm Chuck at MacVoices.com, and I'm Chuck Joyner on Twitter. would love to hear from you. Until the next time, and as always, thanks for watching. Visit macvoices.com for links, show notes, to subscribe, to connect with Chuck on Twitter, Google+, YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, and the Mac Voices blog. Subscribe to our weekly newsletter, the Mac Voices Dispatch, to stay up to date on all the latest Mac Voices news from our front page or at macvoices.com slash newsletter. Do more with your Apple tech by subscribing to the free Mac Voices magazine on Flipboard, by visiting macvoices.com slash magazine. Advertising and sponsorships handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com.